and welcome to the roundup. This month we're going to be reviewing webinars that we put on in May 2015. We had a very busy month, but we've chosen six webinars to showcase to you today. And if you're interested in watching any of them in full, you can do so. There's hyperlinks in the description below the YouTube video. So Melissa, you picked the uh, first webinar was liability provisions. Hadley Baxdale happened 200 years ago almost, so what's new? Well, um, that's actually a question that our speakers addressed. Mm -hmm. So we had Andrew Dodd and Simon Brisman, and they looked at how the most important thing actually for drafting liability provisions is to tailor them to your specific situation. So they took you through some examples of how to make sure your clauses are litigation proof. So can I rely on a, an exclusion of consequential loss like this one on the screen that the parties exclude any liability to the other for consequential losses? That seems okay, doesn't it, Andrew? <laughs> which I think is another of your very brief and commendably succinct clauses, which uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's fine ostensibly on the face of it, 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 it will be understood. Um, but again, it commits that cardinal sin for litigators that it is rather vague and it leaves areas of ambiguity. So, Matt, data protection, an issue that comes up in quite a lot of our webinars, why did you choose to talk about this one? Well, this one came primarily from an in-house point of view. So we had Robert Bond from Charles Russell Speechley's, Paul Donovan from Canopius, and Monica Salgado from Visa. And they primarily talked about how to build compliance programs. And I'm gonna let Robert discuss why it's important to watch this one. So as we sit with an in-house role, why is data protection important? Well, it's at the heart of virtually everything that we do in whatever our business is. Uh, we need to think about data protection, compliance and due diligence in our commercial contracts, whatever they may be. Big data is a major issue and we need to be aware of the advantages of big data, but also the need for big analytics, big guidance and big management around privacy compliance. So on election day, we ran a free webinar uh, called Tackling Trafficking, How to Combat Modern Day Slavery. We were joined by Parosh Chandran, Colleen Tehran and Matt Moriarty. And they did a really good job of looking not only at the legal framework, but also practical tips for what you can do to lead in the fight against trafficking, whether you're a business or a law firm. We're really at the beginning of the next stage uh, of uh, modern reform in terms of combating human trafficking. What we know is that there's four Ps, the protection of victims, pros prosecution and punishment of traffickers, prevention strategies and measures and partnerships. Those are the things that we know are necessary to combat human trafficking. I put there, I'd propose a fifth P, 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 which is passion, but I'd like to say let's scratch that and go with perseverance. So I thought what would be helpful is perhaps to give you two takeaways at for, for what I want to say and cover in particular this afternoon. I think the first one is really to understand how business can contribute to human trafficking. And the second point is what their response might be in, in order to tackle it. Of course, corporate responsibility, particularly for law firms, shouldn't end at the point of referral into to the national referral mechanism or any other uh, process that, that victims might find themselves subjected to. Uh, so, so I really hope, if nothing else, um, that, that the project and, and that this webinar uh, really inspires people to, to, to get involved at, at the very beginning and right the way through the process. So the next webinar we had was uh, e-disclosure and the TCC protocol. So the speakers for this were Andrew Haslam, uh, Mary Claire O'Hara, James Morris and Sarah Paradisi. And they talked about the history of the protocol and also the practical issues in the e-disclosure process. And uh, you invited Andrew back for another webinar? Yeah, that's right. Andrew's coming back in June and he's going to be speaking on computer and technology assisted review. So Melissa, the next one you picked was uh, competition law from the economic perspective. So why should people watch this one? Well, that's a good question. Uh, it's actually one that I asked the speakers when I caught up with them after the webinar and uh, got them to record a little video explaining why you should watch it. I think this webinar would be of great interest uh, to lawyers, both in-house lawyers and private practice, um, with an interest and experience in, in competition law, as it explains how economics um, can be relevant to your work. Uh, and the discussions that we've had um, through, throughout the webinar um, have given lots of insights into the role of economics in competition law, how that's evolved over time, um, and lots of great examples and intuition of how that's been applied in recent cases. 
So the next webinar we looked at was pensions law and the recent case of IBM and Dalgleish. So this webinar looked at employers closing defined benefit schemes and the validity of NPAs. So Wynne Derbyshire chaired this webinar and the speakers were Keith Bryant QC and Lydia Seymour. I'll start in a moment with uh, a shortish introduction to the IBM case just to give uh, everyone a bit of background and, and context. Then Lydia is going to uh, tell us uh, in a bit more detail about the non-pensionability agreements issue that arose in IBM. Uh, I will then deal with uh, some uh, points on uh, another issue that arose, the exclusion notice issue. Uh, Lydia will uh, finish up in terms of the detailed uh, discussion of the, uh, of the case on a, a consultation point uh, and then we'll uh, have a very short uh, uh, slide or also dealing with uh, the future uh, and possible issues that, that may, may arise in the future. Well, that wraps up this month's Roundup video. Thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. Um, if you don't yet subscribe to LexisNexis webinars, you should do so. To find out more, you can go to our website, you can send us an email, or if you're on Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.